Hey guys, welcome to another episode. So today we're taking a look at a customer churn analysis and how to do that in Excel. If you're working in a business or you have your own business that serves primarily individual customers, you're probably aware that customer churn is one of the most crucial metrics that you should pay close attention to if you want to succeed. It basically shows you what percentage of your already established customers you're losing um, over a given period. And uh, it's really important to understand it, track it and find ways to reduce it because as you know, it's much cheaper to retain an existing customer than to find and convert a new prospect. So let's just go ahead and take a look how we can easily set up a quick customer churn rate analysis in Excel that would greatly benefit your business. For this uh, analysis, we're gonna use a, a free um, data set from Kaggle. I'll leave a link to this in the description. Just go ahead, download. Okay, this is our uh, data set. Keep in mind that this is in a CSV format. Let's name it analysis of churn and uh, make sure to select an Excel file. Now that we have this uh, saved, uh, here's what we have. So we have the customer ID, the gender, if it's a senior citizen, if it's a partner, yes, no. If uh, there are some dependents, their tenure in months, um, different services that they have the type of contract, if it's a month-to-month, -month, one year, and I believe we have two years, if they use paperless billing, the payment method, the monthly charges, the total charges, and the churn, which shows us if this customer has churned or not yet. For the purpose of our analysis, we want to split those into cohorts. So meaning that, let's say, we wanna see how many of our customers churn and if this has anything to do with uh, different parameters that we have here. So for instance, the easiest thing to do is to, let's say, look at a female and male as gender and uh, try to figure out if, let's say, female uh, users tend to turn less because they're more loyal to our brand or maybe male users uh, are more loyal because we have a more like male-centric um, uh, marketing campaigns, things like that. We can also take a look at, let's say, if month-to-month -month contracts churn more than, than one-year or two-year contracts that require uh, a bigger commitment. And I would expect that, actually, that uh, we're going to see the highest churn rate on month-to-month -month contracts. We can also look at uh, paperless billing because usually people who don't use paperless billing are older, less technical uh, people that are less likely to go ahead and uh, change their um, their provider and things like that. For the purpose of this, I'm gonna completely disregard the different types of services because I wanna show you that um, even if you have no particular industry knowledge about the business, you can still draw some at least basic conclusions based just on, on regular uh, data that's, uh, that's available in pretty much any company. To start our analysis, we're gonna add three more columns here to the side. The first thing we wanna do is because the tenure here is in months and uh, that's just too granular, you can see that we have like 58, 71. So I wanna calculate the tenure in years. Call this column tenure in years and uh, Let's just do some colors here. I always like to do like my data is in blue and my added columns will be in orange. So my tenure in years use the roundup function. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the number of months divided by 12 to calculate the number of years and round it to zero, but round it up. So anything between one and 12 months will be rounded up to one year. So it's within one year. Okay, this is one. Let's control D to copy down. Let's see, 34 months is in their third year, 45 is in their fourth, one, one, the second year, the first one. So it seems to be working. I'm gonna copy that down all the way. 
that's that's our tenure in years. The next column we're gonna add is I want to do a churn counter, and um, this will pretty much just allow me. Let me copy the formatting here. This would pretty much make it easier to calculate the churn rate because right now the churn is uh, just yes or no, and um, it would be harder to count the yeses or the noes. So just gonna do if the churn equals to yes, then give me one, otherwise give me zero. So that way, when we copy that down, you can see that we get zero, uh, we get one next to each customer that churned, and um, that way, if we just take the sum of all those, 1869, those are the customers that churned out of the total 7,000. Much easier to calculate. And I also want to have a counter for all my customers. And um, this would serve two purposes at the same time. Let's name it total counter. One, uh, it would allow me to have the same way as with the turn counter, just an easy way to, to get the number of customers. But it would also help me ensure that each of those customers is unique and that uh, there are no like um, in, in some data sets, you might have like different plans for the same customer. So they may turn one, but start another. And I want to make sure that uh, this is continuous uh, in time. So if one customer turned and then came back, they won't have two lines, if that makes sense. And uh, in order to do that, I'm just going to do a count if function. And I want everything within column A to be counted but when, wherever it's equals to A2, which is the current uh, number. Okay, this gives me one, and if my assumptions are correct, we should have only ones here, so the sum is 7,043, and our last row is 7,044, so it's the same number. This means that each customer, each of those customer IDs only appears once. Next step, let's create a pivot table. I'm gonna select the whole table and gonna go to insert, pivot table. First thing we wanna do here is right now we have no calculation in terms of our churn rate. Create a calculated field. So I'm gonna go to the pivot table analyze tab, fields, items and sets, calculated field. And let's name this churn rate. And I want it to be equal to my churn counter divided over my total counter. So now, no matter what cohort and no matter what grouping we use, this would always take the sum of the churn counter for our respective uh, view and, and um, divide it over the total counter. Okay, add. Now we have our churn rate here, okay? And you can see that it automatically populates and the average churn rate that we have is 26.5%. That's already a good basis, like our starting basis for our analysis. But uh, let's go ahead and look at uh, what can we start. I already told you that I'm pretty sure that, um, that the contract will have, the contract type will have different uh, churn rates. So let's drop that into our rows. And yeah, you can see that we have, just convert those into percentages, that we have our month-to-month -month users churn at about 43%, our one-year at 11 and our two-year at 3%. Something else that we can add here is just add the monthly charges, okay? Obviously, we don't want those as numbers, but we also don't want the sum we can change the value field settings to average. And let's just get the average monthly charges per dose. So one thing that we can see is that there's not much of an incentive to go into a one year or two year contract. You don't get a lot of benefits. So maybe one way to reduce monthly churn is to make more people switch to one year or two year and um, if we add our total counter, this will show us the number of customers that we have in each cohort. So you can see that here we have like more than twice the other categories. 
half of our customers that ever signed on were month to month customers. So if let's say we raise the average monthly charge for those and uh, incentivize them to switch to a one year or two year contract, then this will already have a huge impact on our revenue. Okay, what, what other things uh, can we look at? But actually before we do that, let's go ahead and uh, create a new sheet, name it analysis. And I'm just gonna apply my formatting here, zoom it in a bit. What we can start building out here is, we can start copying those, their contract type, so that uh, whenever we do like a new view in the pivot table that shows us something uh, important, we can always go ahead and place it here so we can later reference in our analysis. I'm gonna go here, grab those, and I'm gonna paste them as values. So those will be numbers and those will be percentages and those will be numbers as well. The monthly charges are pretty much our MRR, our monthly recurring revenue. And this is our contract type. Let's go ahead, make this look a bit better. Okay, and uh, something else that we can do here is select those, go to insert and add a table. And this table doesn't show us a lot right now, but if we select the title and here you can link it, here's a pro tip for you, so that whenever we change this here, the name of the table will also change. And uh, let's go ahead and change the chart type. We want a combo. We want our churn rate to be our line and be on the secondary axis and our average monthly charges to be like that. This is actually a bit misleading, I think, because the difference is from just like 61 to 66, but it appears so huge. So let's go ahead and uh, maybe if we switch those, it would be uh, a bit better. If we select the axis here and format it, let's select this, go to, the, to here to the axis options and um, let's just make the minimum be zero and the maximum be a hundred. Okay, now we get a much better representation. And uh, for this, just for the sake of making it appear a bit better, let's do it to 50%. What I'd like to do next is grab this and uh, just change the fill color. I don't really like this one. And this here, I'm gonna make it in my orange. Okay, we can add the data labels here, select them go here, place them above and uh, bolt them with control B and then maybe select this one, make it white and uh, do the same for this one, make it white and uh, I'm also gonna add the numbers here. I want those numbers to be on the inside of the end here, I want them all to be white. Let's bold them and uh, I also want those to be a number and no decimals. So this would uh, show me our monthly charges here and our churn rate over here and uh, this is not sum, this is just churn rate. Okay, so this is what we can do for each of the analysis that we perform. Uh, we're not gonna do that here, but uh, let's just go ahead and see what else can we uh, learn from our data set. What, what I usually do is have all those listed here and here maybe I'll add like a huge text box and write down some analysis or comments. So this is then ready to be PDF'd or, or just sent out. What else can we look at? Already mentioned that uh, we might look at uh, gender. So let me just close that. Let's go ahead here, remove our contract and add our gender. 
You can see that there are pretty much the same number of female and male users and uh, the churn rate is also quite similar. So this, um, this can either mean that we have a really well-rounded marketing campaign that uh, doesn't um, appeal more to, to men or women. Yeah, you can see that our partners have much lower churn rates, so less than 20 compared to 33 for our non-partners. Something that's peculiar here is that we charge our partners more on average, which may as well have a reasonable explanation, but uh, with, with the amount of data that we have, there's no way to, to analyze that. But uh, you can see that just by walking in the door in any business, grabbing some data on sales, you can already start to get a pretty good picture and, uh, and start um, gaining insight that would help the business. Something else that we can look at is, let's remove partners. I already mentioned uh, the paperless billing. Yeah, just as I expected, someone that has not opted for paperless billing is much less likely to churn. And my expectation would be that uh, those are probably um, older people or more traditional companies that, uh, that prefer to do things on paper and uh, they're not so tech savvy. So it's much less likely for them to, let's say, go online, research uh, competitors of our business and, uh, and ultimately switch over. Here, it's also uh, noticeable that uh, the charge, the average charge is much higher for people that opted for paperless billing. So if those are individuals that uh, are customers, and I think this is a telecommunication a data set, then I would fully expect that, uh, that here we have the younger people and uh, here we have older people that opted for uh, less features and that's why their monthly uh, plans are cheaper, but, um, but at the same time, they churn much less. And last, let's look at um, our tenure, uh, the, the thing that we prepared. So it's at the tenure in years and uh, we can see, so we have some churn rate of zero here and zero years. So Pretty much we have 11 customers that just signed, but let's look at the rest. And you can see that as, as is normal and expected, as our customers stay longer, the churn rate decreases. And, um, and this is normal because the longer they stay, the more of them already churned in previous periods and also they're more loyal. So. Let's say someone that's uh, stuck with us for six years or between five and six years, it's, uh, it's really less likely that they're gonna churn compared to someone that's been with us less than one year. Remember we round it up, so this means between zero and one, this means from one to two years and so on. You can go ahead and try that with every single parameter that, uh, that you have in your data set and uh, what I usually do is just go ahead, play around like that and start copying all those that make sense or give me some insights, start copying them here, maybe add a chart, maybe not, depends on, on what you plan to do with the data. That's pretty much uh, my whole process when I'm trying to, to perform a churn analysis. And uh, when I do that, it's usually a, a brief overview of a client, so I won't go into too much detail. I'll end up with an Excel spreadsheet that would have like five, six of those and some comments here. And that would be the extent of my analysis. That's all I had for you today. I really hope you enjoyed this video on setting uh, your own churn rate analysis in Excel. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. Also, don't forget to subscribe if you're not already and maybe even punch the bell icon to receive notifications every time I upload a new video. Till then, thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.